things that turned out that way because of what we've done, but it's what God has done in our lives. And it's just a real honor to be able to, to share with our brothers and sisters what God is doing in our lives. So as we not only do, but it's uplifting to them, they may be going through the same problems we are, and it will help them. So my testimony started 27 years ago here. Before I came here, I was a, a truck driver with all the attributes of a truck driver. And uh, I liked to drink, and I did it quite often. And uh, my wife didn't like it very much, but she hung in there. Her and uh, Amber had gone to the Church of Christ all their lives, and uh, I was what Pastor Dave used to call a twice-washed Christian. I used to go on Easter, because she made me, and Christmas. And that was, that was the extent. And I go there and sit there, and my mind would be a million miles away, so it wasn't doing me any good. But uh, Amber received the Holy Spirit, and she completely changed. And uh, Evelyn and I couldn't help but notice the change she had. So it made us kind of wonder what was going on. Evelyn came down and checked everything out, and she found out that, that uh, instead of giving her... Uh, maybes or I don't know or not important when she asks questions about, about God and the Bible and, and whatnot. The church here which really shocked her would open the Bible and would show her right there in, in print what the Bible said. You know Amber asked the Church of Christ what is this speaking in tongues and they told her oh, don't worry about it it's passed away and uh, <coughs> When we came here, we were told that you needed to repent, be baptized, and that you'd receive the Holy Spirit. And I didn't believe it, because uh, I didn't believe in God. I felt that the Catholic Church had taken the Bible and, and um, rewritten it to, to suit their, their uh, doctrine and whatnot. But uh, I came along to, uh, 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 I don't know, was it, they had a play here. And Eileen, I think Eileen was a pig. And uh, there was a wolf and some other things. But uh, I thought it was pretty funny that, that these people would, would get up and do this kind of stuff as Christians because it, it was hilarious, you know? And I always thought of Christians as people that walked around and uh, didn't say much to anybody because they were so pious. So that kind of uh, broke the, the uh, ice, I guess, a little bit. And Evelyn invited Pastor Dave to come over to the house, and her and Dina were going to pray for the Holy Spirit. And uh, they'd asked a few months before if they could have a, a house meeting at my house. And it was in the summertime, you know, 100, 110 degrees. And uh, that particular Saturday, there was a sporting good uh, event that I wanted to see. And so I said, well, if you want to have a, a house meeting, uh, you can have it in the garage. And the garage has no windows, no air conditioning. It's just a garage. And it shocked me because they came over and they had a meeting out of my garage. And they came out and they were all sweaty and just as happy as could be. Uh, hmm, that's strange. But uh, Evelyn invited Pastor Dave to come over to the house, which made me mad because I didn't like preachers or politicians. So it's like Pete. I turned the, the sprinklers on them when they came around. But... Uh, Pastor Dave asked me what I thought about this. My whole family was Pentecostal. Uh, they were from Oklahoma, and they went to the Assemblies of God. And they hooped and hollered and jumped over the chairs, and did all that kind of stuff. Uh, they were spirit-filled. They spoke in tongues. But they, they were completely <coughs> disorderly. And as a young person, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine that that would be what, if God was real, that would be how he would want people to act because they look pretty stupid and pretty silly to me as a kid, you know? So what would a grown-up think about it? So I went on off and I did everything that I wanted to do. I, I led an extremely worldly life. And uh, Amber got filled with the Holy Spirit. She completely changed. And Pastor Dave asked me, would you like to have some prayer? And my mind is just, you know, <laughs> not me. You know, I don't need to pray. I, I, I take care of myself. I always have and I always will. But for some reason, it came out of my mouth that I said yes. And I was always a person that tried to do 
whatever I said I would do. So I had time for prayer and I went in there. I didn't know how to pray. And so uh, I listened. Everybody saying, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And uh, uh, well, that's the way you pray. So I started saying hallelujah. And it didn't take probably less than five minutes until I couldn't say hallelujah anymore. So I stopped. And Pastor Dave came over and he said, no, don't stop. Just let it go. So the next time it started, I just let it go. And I started speaking in this language that I didn't know. And I, the perspiration was so bad. I was so excited and so hot. I was sopping wet. I had sweat dripping off my nose. So I knew for sure that it wasn't something that I did. And it wasn't, I wasn't the kind of person that you're going to uh, uh, influence and have me do something because you believe it. So I couldn't deny what happened. I've been coming along for 27 years. Uh, we've had all kinds of blessings. My wife, you know, almost died twice and she was raised up. The doctors gave up on her because of the prayer of the saints all around the world. She was raised up. Before I came to the Lord, I had a, I didn't have a heart attack, but I had open heart surgery. And uh, they did a bypass in the front of my heart. And they sent me home and I worked for another five years. And in that five years, you know, uh, I uh, uh, got worse and worse. And all of a sudden, um, I, had, I was laying in the middle of the floor, curled up in a little ball, and I was that close to having what they call a widowmaker heart attack. And that's when the vessel here plugs up, your heart just explodes. It's like a horse that you run too long, and their lungs with their heart blow up. But praise the Lord, I got there in time. And uh, right after that, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. No, I take that back. I was already filled with the Holy Spirit. That was in 1994. And uh, I remember uh, everybody praying for me. And uh, uh, I, I, I came out, and I was fine. And uh, they put more stints in my heart. And uh, uh, they sent me on my way. And over the years since, and that would have been in 1994, I came along, I think, in 1991. But uh, in that period of time, uh, all the vessels in my heart are plugged up except the one they bypassed and one other one that has about four or five stents in it. Um, I've had all kinds of other ailments. And every time I get sick, every time something happens, you pray for me, the people around the world pray for me, and I'm raised up. And just like the other one, the doctors don't know why. They can't, they can't say, well, you know, we did this or we did that. But we know it's because God put us there as an example, as a testimony. Uh, and I'm here today to, to testify to all the things God has done in my life. Uh, he's done some mighty miracles in my life, my whole family, my, my wife, my kids, everybody. And uh, if it wasn't for the Lord, when I had my uh, uh, stints put in my heart, they told me I had 10 years to live. And uh, that was in 1994. And uh, here I am still going today. And I actually, physically, my body is probably in better shape than it was back then. So praise the Lord. I know the Lord is in my heart. He's in my life. He's in my family's life. As long as I continue looking and uh, praying to Him that He's gonna He's gonna bless my my life. We know we all come to an end sooner or later, but what a glory it is to when you do come to the end to know that the Lord is with you. Amen.